So attractivist is, I, I wouldn't say it's something that like came suddenly. It was definitely a long process. Um, my background is I started off as a DJ and uh, did that all through like high school, ended up getting involved in like the club scene and radio scene and there was a lot of Asian Americans there and so it was really cool to be part of that but then you realize that a lot of the music that you end up playing you know is what's on the radio, what's popular and uh, although we did a lot of shows um, that featured like Asian American artists, a lot of times they weren't on the radio, actually a majority of the times they never really were on the radio. So I ended up interning at a small independent record label um, called Classified Records uh, right when I got into college and it was a Asian American like run and operated um, and founded record label so that ex all the all, most of the artists on the roster were Asian American so that was really my first introduction into what it's like to be an Asian American artist trying to make it out in, in America, just basically like the world. And it was really a struggle. I mean, you hear the stories of us trying to work within the market, but uh, you know, because it's a market that doesn't ha normally have Asian Americans, a lot of times, you know, it's, 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 a, it's much more difficult. And then part of, uh, and I, with, with college, I, I ended up studying sociology, did a lot of social work. Um, so that was also like my background as well, just observing, understanding spaces, places, interactions. And so I think the combination of being introduced to like the entertainment side, the music side, you know, um, and seeing Asian Americans in both like entertainment as well as, you know, working with nonprofits, working with community organizations on the social work side, uh, I think that really influenced just like the, the base of what Tractivist was to become. And then from that point on, I just like dove in, you know, trying to just find, I'm, you know, become, because I'm a DJ, it's just natural for me to collect music, to dig, to uh, find what's next, what's hot, what's out there. <clears throat> and really, like, when it comes to Asian Americans who make music, um, you know, it, it, it's very difficult to find, especially back then. This was before, you know, YouTube and, and Twitter and all of that stuff. So you really, really had to dig. I mean, we started uh, our own, like, online radio show um, that was, you know, we were running out of our garages and it was like an Asian, Asian American music radio show and when I connected with artists it was like through email and they would literally physically send CDs over I mean that was the time so um, you know over the years it was just a passion that just kept growing and growing um, and you know it got to the point where I, I just realized like it's something um, you know you, after doing it for so many years after being invested for so long then you realize the changes is not <clears throat> the change didn't didn't happen as fast or still not happening as fast as you would think you know with Asian Americans like with our population with our numbers growing um, with our involvement in the industries in the scene in the arts um, you would think that it would grow with um, uh, it would grow you know in popular media but still like it's it's still a struggle we're we're fighting for representation and um, so as long <clears throat> as we're not there if we're not present um, in that in that place then um, that's a fight that we're always going to try for I, I like the I always like thinking about it because that wasn't the original name um, I thought of some uh, we thought of something else um, but then when you work with like lawyers and stuff they basically tell you like your chance of getting the name um, and so we came up with a name and they said you have like less than 10% chance of getting it so you're gonna expect some legal troubles if you go forward with it so I was like oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that you know what I mean like I can't afford to do that um, I'm having trouble affording a lawyer to even have this conversation so I was like okay I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and I'm gonna come up with this name and, and by the end of the day and whatever inspires like this it's gonna happen and I'm gonna be cool with it and then so I was just thinking about it and it came it came within that day I mean I'm very thankful to God that it just came because uh, that's where I feel like I got it from but the word itself you can really break it down um, it is really track and activist it's two 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 ideas there track that's very easy song track it's a you know piece of music but at the same time I think it's cool because it does also mean like uh, the paying attention to the progress of things 
right? Um, and activists, um, you know, a lot of times people think of the word activists like people being on the streets and like making noise and stuff like that. Yeah, of course, you know, but I look at it in the terms of um, just anything that campaigns for social change. And I see that what we're trying to do is just like a daily campaign to try to create change in the sphere of just like music. The goal of Tractivist is not to exist, straight up, right? Because if we exist, that means there's an issue, right? We are meant to, we are intending to go away. Maybe not the archive, because that should always be there. But the idea of having to promote diversity in music, come on, like, that's, it's, it's a very basic idea that is very difficult to implement for some reason. So for us to having to stop pointing this out, that's a, that, that's a goal. Like, we want to stop doing that. So um, that would be like an ultimate goal. What is, what is the ultimate goal is to, to just not have to do that anymore.